morning. Welcome to the Sun Corona. She's a 42 foot X commercial fish boat. So I want to take you out today to go out and, uh, and see all the wonderment that's going on around the herring on Hornby Island. So welcome aboard. So as I said on the dock, this is the Sun Corona, and uh, of course I forgot to inter introduce myself because to a fishermen on the coast, the boat is always way more important than whoever's driving it. So my name's Grant Scott. So here we are out at Norris Rocks, and. Uh, you can hear, you can, we're going to hear all these guys, so we'll get out here and turn the engine off so you can hear them. Too bad you can't smell them because when you get 500 of these guys out here and they're all doing their thing, they get a bit whiffy out there. <laughs> These are stellar sea lions. They're the largest of all the sea lions. And these, they've been coming here like this now for, I don't know, 15 or 20 years. There's always been a few around here, but it's only in the last 10 or 15 years that the populations have just kept increasing. Everybody's here. The, you can see the seagulls are here feeding on the, what the sea lions bring up on the beach. The young ones are here. They're just a bunch of teenagers, right? They hang out just like, Teenagers they hang out in bunches. They just having a good time here. They're, they're uh, learning from their parents. They're learning how to find herring over there. There's cormorants over there. There's uh, probably 90% of the cormorant population in the entire Salish Sea will be here when the herring are here because this is the place to be. This is where the herring are. And eagles. They say most of the eagles, uh, not only just in the Salish Sea, but uh, actually on the BC coast end up here for a good number of them. They'll travel for hundreds of miles to come where the herring are because that's where their food is. And that's what they build up their, their strength and their energy to go back and um, build their nests and lay the eggs, raise their babies, wherever they're from. Every time I come out here, I see something. I've been coming out here for 50 years, and every time I come out here, I see something new and something different. It's magic. Okay, well, we're out here off Flora Island, and it's pretty obvious that there's a spawn going on because you can see all the birds over there, and the boats are all collecting. These are all gill netters. So they're waiting for the fish to come up and start to spawn and then they'll, they'll put their nets in the water. So yeah, the flora here has got um, the California sea lions on it. And, um, and you can see on the end of the rock there, all the birds are collecting. So it's birds, sea lions, whales, boats, us. You might wonder who's driving while I'm up here doing the blah, blah, blah. It's the autopilot. Okay, it's five minutes to one it's on March the 9th or 10th, somewhere there. And uh, we have full announced this morning that the gill net fishery is going to open at one. So what we've done today is we've, we've brought you out. We've gone out and seen the sea lions. We've, we've gone out to Flora and seen the Californias. We've seen the birds. We've seen the whales. We've seen all these creatures that have come because of the herring. We've seen the herring balls, we've seen the birds going, all that amazing that happens. We've also seen the biggest predator of them all, and that's us. A 
on the one hand, you see the wildlife that are here because of the herring, and then you see the herring caught, and, they, that, and then people start to question that whole thing about, is that a smart thing to do? And a lot of people get quite upset about it. Uh, people recognize, you know, people need jobs. We need to eat fish. We're gonna be taking things out of the environment, but is this a smart thing to do with these important little fish? Can we do it a better way? We believe there is a better way. We're encouraging the federal government to bring in a herring recovery program, put $100 million towards this program that will assist First Nations to rebuild stocks, not just in the Strait of Georgia, but on the entire BC coast, that will support fishermen, that'll buy back licenses, retraining programs for fishermen that'll get relocated out of the industry, that will support community-based industry that uh, could use all the herring and not just grind 90% of them up into fish farm food and sell some of the roe. Also, we should have independent science and all of this would go towards protecting and enhancing these amazing creatures that you've seen out here today. Even though you see the, the herring fishery out there with all those fish going into those boats, we're not against those fishermen out there. We're, we're against the taking of those fish that all these other creatures around us need. And we want you to remember on our way home here that just how amazing this whole thing is. It's just an, an incredible spectacle around Hornby Island that we get to see every year. Thanks for coming out on uh, on the old Sun Corona for uh, our fifth Herring Fest virtual boat tours this year. Um, really appreciate you coming and enjoying the wonderment of Hornby Island. And uh, as much as I don't like asking if you can possibly help um, Conservancy Hornby Island, as you can imagine, all this stuff uh, costs money. And if you can help us, that would be greatly appreciated. But what we're really pleased about is the fact that you could come on with us. Thank you.